and shared with us why he joined Toastmasters and why he joined an advanced club. He hopes to bring new awareness to all Toastmasters as to how they can become better. Please help me welcome Larry Sapansky and his speech, Stepping Up Your Game. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. As a young child, I played Little League Baseball. I played baseball for two reasons. Number one, my father was the coach. And number two, because I didn't have a choice. <laughs> Even today, you could put me in a room with a group of eclectic people, and I promise you, I will probably be in the group that's the least athletic. If there's something to trip over, I'll find it. If there's something to drop and break, just don't give it to me. <laughs> Athleticism isn't one of my strong points. But my father, being the coach, would always gather the team together before the game and give out the assignments and then give that pep talk. Steve, you're playing first. Roger, you're pitching. Adam, you're going to be at second. And I stand behind my father and I listen for my fate. And all of a sudden, most of the time, I heard it. Larry, you're bad boy. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> I didn't want to be in the field. My teammates didn't want me in the field. I was happy eating my gummy bears and picking up the bats and the balls and keeping everything organized. That was where my strength lies. But then my father would always end with the same little chant that everybody joined in on. Team, today's our chance to be better than we were yesterday. On a count of three. One, two, three. Step up your game! The team dispersed. Everybody took the field. When my father first said that, I was befuddled. What does that mean? And I asked my father, Daddy, what, what, what do you mean when you say stepping up your game? Son, every day you have the ability to be better than you were yesterday. Every day you have the chance to make a difference in someone else's life. Every day you need to take that advantage and make yourself better. When you walk in a room, I want you to walk out, leaving that room in a better position than it was when you walked in. Now, to be honest, at that age, I understood the first two things. When he talked about the room, I thought he was talking about toys and dirty up the locker. <laughs> but later in life, I understood the metaphor, and it made sense. And this metaphor of stepping up your game is something that I carried with me throughout my entire life. We always strive to be better than we were yesterday. We always want to leave the room better when we leave than when we arrive. And that brought up the thought process of, why did I join Toastmasters? How many of you know that one defining moment or moment that you thought, I need Toastmasters? Anyone? I can remember mine, November 12, 2005. I was given the opportunity to, to share a presentation with a group of people at a metaphysics bookstore and mentor on a topic I knew very well and I was passionate about. There was over 30 people sitting in the audience when I was introduced. I walked up, I set my notes down, I read page one. I looked up, there were a couple of empty seats. I read page two. I looked up, there were more empty seats. By the time I finished page 14, I looked up and there were five people left. Four got up and walked out. One came up. Larry, you know your material. You like your material. 
but your presentation skills are awful. You need to look into Toastmasters. At this point in my life, I, I thought Toastmasters was an appliance. I had no idea. So I remember going home and looking up Toastmasters and, and, and seeing the toaster ovens. And, and then all of a sudden I see Toastmaster.org. And I started researching it and realized what Toastmasters was all about. I sent an email to a club in Medina. And one hour later, I received a response from a very dear friend who sadly is no longer with us. Chet Kieslowski. He invited me to come to the Medina Club and experience Toastmasters. I went. Not only did I enjoy myself, but it was a game changer for me, and it was a time for me to step up my game. And that day I joined Medina. I came home feeling really good about this Jumped back on Toastmasters.org, because it's now in my favorite place, <laughs> and started researching and found a club in Illyria, Illyria Toastmasters. And I joined that with Pat. Pat was a member back then. I knew that there was, no, as good as Medina was, there was no way they were going to fix this hot mess. <laughs> I needed two or three <coughs> So I joined two clubs, and I started working through the manuals. And in the first five months, I worked through my 10 speeches, and I was feeling really good, and I made it to my very first spring conference. I had never experienced Toastmasters outside of my, my little dome of a club. I didn't know what Toastmasters offered outside of the safety net of this, these people that you become friends with. I walked away from my very first conference with three takeaways. Number one, Darren McCroy is awesome. Stage type, stage type, stage type. Darren and I are still friends till, even until today. He's, he's a huge mentor of mine. Number two, I saw my first international speech contest. David Caban and Mike Garrick blew me away. I walked away saying, I want to be like Mike. I want to be like David. And number three, I walked away feeling, I made a mistake. I made a mistake when I joined Toastmasters. You see, I joined Toastmasters because I wanted Toastmasters to fix me. I joined Toastmasters because I wanted Toastmasters to make me better. I wanted Toastmasters to step up my game. I joined Toastmasters because they were going to put me in a place where I wanted to be. And I walked away from that conference realizing that I joined Toastmaster for the wrong reason. Because it's not about me. Toastmasters is a family. It's about us. And at that conference, I realized the day I joined Toastmasters, to Toastmasters also joined me. Because it wasn't me. It was our group together, working together to help everybody grow and get better. And I finally understood the concept of being part of a group and not being one individual trying to get the most out of an organization. I felt bad because I had given five months to an organization that was all about me, and I wonder how many people did I miss? How many people could have used a handout that I could have helped with? How many people could I have made a difference in in that five months? And I vowed to get better at being more of a team player than just being an individual. And at this point, I also wanted to step up my game and get into the competitions, because I wanted to be like Mike and Dave. So I started competing, and a, a, an amazing thing happened. As I'd go from club to club, I'd hear the typical, oh, I loved your speech, I can't wait to the next one. Great use of pauses. I liked your body language. But then I'd have the people from the advanced clubs say, well, you know, Larry, <laughs> I, we got work. <laughs> what do you mean everybody else likes it? Yeah, but I don't. <laughs> so I started realizing that the good constructive feedback was coming from the senior members and the advanced members 
who put the time in to really understand what it takes to write a speech, what it takes to present a speech, and what it takes to give a good constructive evaluation. This is all part of giving back, and it's, it, it, it's not just about me, it's about giving back to the audience, and the audience giving back to me and us, because any feedback I get today isn't just about me, it's for everybody. It can help each and every one of us. So at the very first contest I competed in, it's my second year. I was lucky, I made it to the district finals in my second year, and I, I made it there because the area contest was, uh, I won by default, nobody showed up. <laughs> and then the division contest, I won by default because nobody showed up. <laughs> So I made it to the district, and I was excited because I was finally on the big stage in district, and the day we met the contestants, I saw Goliath. I saw David. And I saw Mike. And I said, oh, no. But then David reassured me he wasn't in the contest. So, so not only have one giant to slay. That year, Mike won the contest. And I came in second. And I remember after the contest, at the back of the room, thinking, he gave a better speech. He deserved to win. But what do I need to do to move it to the next level? And once again, I got caught up in that little box of me, me, me. I should have been over where Mike was and congratulated him. But instead, Mike came over to me shook my hand and congratulated me and told me how proud he was. And at that moment I realized the importance of what we give back to the organization. Once again, it's not about me. And I realized at that moment that I wasn't going to put myself in a position where this was all about me ever again. 2011, I was fortunate enough to make it to the World Championship in Las Vegas and present my speech. 2012, I competed again. I was all ready, I had a great speech. And then all of a sudden I get a phone call from a young man who says, Larry, I love your style, I love your speeches. Can you help me? I, I'd like to compete in the speech contest. I said, absolutely, let's do this. So I started working with him and we developed his speech and we started developing his stage presence and everything I learned in Vegas and Kitty will tell you all about it. It's 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 training on steroids. What you <laughs> what you learn at that level, you can't words can't come, even explain it. But I walked him through the entire process and my wife asked me, she's like, Are you crazy? <laughs> I said, Why? She said, You may compete against this guy. You're you're mentoring somebody who you may very well come up against at the district level. So, she's like, okay. <laughs> As fate would have it that year, I made it to the district. And so did David. David gave his speech, the best speech I've ever seen David give. And that year, David won in 1970. And for the first time, I felt so elated because for the first time, I was able to do what Mike did for me so many years earlier. I was able to give back and help somebody else step up their game. And that's what this is all about. Stepping up your game isn't just about you. It's about leaving the room better when you leave than when you walk in. The advanced clubs give us the ability to get better evaluations. Bill spoke about it. The evaluations you're going to get at a dance club is nothing like you're going to get at your home clubs. You know, if you if, if you like the, I really liked your speech, and, and I can't wait for the next one. And I think I loved your pauses, and, and, and I really like the way you use all your adjective nouns and pronouns all together with, without using run on sentences. And you really, really, really did a good job with all your vocal variety and your, and your movements. 
bottom of it. I can't wait for your next one. If that's what you want, then advanced clubs isn't for you. But if you want to learn, and if you want good criticism from a, a wall structure evaluator and a wall structure group, because you will get a group evaluation afterwards, what you're going to learn from an advanced club is bar none. Outstanding. Another thing advanced clubs do is we time everything. Timing is very important. One word of advice. If you come to an advanced club, don't get up and use the restroom. Because you're going to end up in a timer for work. <laughs> yes. Speaker number one, four minutes and 57 seconds. Speaker number two, six minutes and 37 seconds. Larry got up and went to a washroom and came back at 57 seconds. <laughs> We time everything, but that's how we stay on time, and that's how we make the most of our agenda. The advanced clubs is where learning begins. I always equate the home clubs as being high school. You learn the fundamentals, you work everything out, you make your friends, you get that basic education, and then the advanced clubs are more like college. You can you can do a a, a a two-year work from home process and, and just come to meet advanced clubs when you want, or you can really jump in and make every meeting and join both advanced clubs and really go crazy. <laughs> but the advanced clubs is where you're going to step up your game. And today I've got a challenge for you. Your challenge is not only to step up your game, but to do something that I don't think anybody's asked you at least to this point. Join an advanced club. Make yourself better, not for yourself, but for the other members in your club, so that you can go back to your home club and help them grow and learn and get to where you are. Because I can honestly tell you, there's nothing better than having somebody that you mentor surpass where you were. That's the most gratifying feeling in the world. So my friends, join an advanced club, and I ask you, step up your game.